With the RAF and the Royal Navy pinned down, Germany had successfully established a foothold in the last remaining resistance in Western Europe, Great Britain. Now, London was under siege and facing its darkest hour. Hitler was banking on the city being bombed into submission, breaking the British resolve once and for all. Dunkirk had taught the British one important lesson, never to give up in the face of the impossible. Failure to hold London would mean Britain and the war would be lost to the Germans. Lieutenant Edwards of the 7th Royal Tank Regiment, 1st Army Tank Brigade, had been assigned to stem the tide of advancing German armor. Soviet Union bound to a non-aggression pact with the Germans and America wallowing in isolationism. Edwards was left in no doubt that the British would face this storm alone. Edwards had been ordered to halt the German advance. He was the last line of London's defense. Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and uh, yeah the new war story operation Sea Lion. A couple of things I want to say before we get started. The Archer, um, which reminded me because I've seen it there, I've probably said this before but some of you may not have heard. If you're on the Archer, the British or one of the British TDs, drive it backwards until you get into position because it is much much faster in reverse and was actually intended to be driven backwards. If you look inside the model you'll see the driver's seat facing the back. So forwards it basically goes about 12 kilometers an hour backwards i think it's about 35 so there is a big difference and the other thing is uh, i did say in the video i uploaded earlier i was going to try and uh, answer comments this afternoon but uh, i had to have an well i was going to the hospital again for a couple of appointments uh, and but it was for eye tests again and uh, ended up having those damn drops in that make your pupils dilate and also all your vision goes blurry so I couldn't really see to read them or reply particularly well. Um, so I thought I'll just basically uh, do it tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning I will be answering comments on the last three or four videos I think. Um, definitely this one, the one I put up this morning, heavy tank number six. So yeah, probably the last three or four videos including this one. Uh, and that'll be at some point in the morning. Now, apart from that, here we are, back at the war story. Uh, you, well, you're in a Cromwell this time. There's only one upgrade to get for this one, because these ones, uh, don't forget, they do have upgrades to them. It's just over f about 4,300 XP, I think. And this is just completely stock as it is. Uh, be careful when you go into it, because when you do click onto it, it does put you straight into this without any equipment, uh, not equipment, supplies or anything. So I basically quit straight out back to the garage and uh, put the supplies on, uh, you know, your repair kit, etc. Um, so yeah, just be aware of that when you go on this. And uh, yeah, so we're fighting off the Germans from London at the moment. This is actually a modified version of the ravaged capital, or the Paris map, as, uh, as it <laughs> so obviously is. But when you start off, if you look behind you, there's no Eiffel Tower, there is actually the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. And part way through it, it is best to move from that point in the middle down one of the streets because they do start coming from all sides, and it just gives you a bit of a, uh, a bit of cover from your flanks. So uh, I would recommend doing that. But yeah, it's um, not much to upgrade it. I basically did this one, and then just used uh, a little bit of free XP just to get it fully upgraded. Um, well, the one upgrade pack on it. But yeah, it's um, I've enjoyed this one. It didn't take me as long as I thought. And it was fun. It really was fun. And I, to be honest, I like the uh, some of these modified maps. Not so much this one, but the next two were quite cool. Um, but I, I don't know. I just felt it was. I don't know why I felt it was shorter than uh, than the one Centurion. But I have definitely uh, enjoyed this one as well. It just, uh, like I say, it just didn't seem to take me quite as long. Uh, maybe that's because you can get straight into them now. I really don't know. Now, another thing worth mentioning as well, 
and uh, yeah, I do nearly die here actually. Uh, another thing worth mentioning quickly is when you finished this one, in fact, have I got time to say it? I think I probably have. Uh, when you finish this war story, which is Operation Sea Lion, obviously, and uh, you actually unlock for 24 hours only in the store uh, a snake bite pack, um, you know, the Cromwell snake bite. And it's that which, well, is listed at 4,000 gold on its own. And it's only 1,900, including three days of premium, a garage slot, uh, some boost stops as well, and you get the snake bite crew with a special perk. And I'll be back in a moment. Hitler's assault on London had failed. What's more, the British rearguard had managed to push the German armor back into the surrounding countryside. The tables had been turned on the Third Reich. Lieutenant Edwards had been ordered to move his unit into German-held territory and recapture the RAF airfields, which were now being used by the Luftwaffe. the bridge, Edwards knew this was their chance to pay back the Germans for Dunkirk, London, and the invasion of Great Britain. While the Germans continued to operate airfields on English soil, the RAF jockeys would never gain air superiority. Right, now I've tried to edit this one a little bit differently. I've just left the, uh, the war story sort of screen part off it so it, it flows a little bit better it's not coming up war stories and there goes my voice again it's not coming up war stories operation sea line at the beginning of it so i've just tried a bit of a, a different edit with this one and there is a, some of it in the um in the sort of cut scenes which is a, a little bit jerky or glitchy that's not my recording equipment or anything else that is just how it was for me um, I, I don't know why um, the others were, were smooth, no sort of glitches or anything, but for this one, for some reason, there were those uh, sort of small glitches and, and sort of jerkiness that you may have seen. Now, it took me a minute to figure out which map this one was, and it's Thiepval Ridge. It's uh, a very heavily modified version of Thiepval Ridge, and um, I kind of like it, actually. Very open, I, I don't know if this would work... I mean, it'd be nice to see this in multiplayer, I suppose, but I don't quite know how well it'd work because it is very, very open. Um, but at this point, I have got this upgraded. Like I say, there is just the one upgrade pack uh, for this one, for this Cromwell. So I just stuck it on after that first match. Um, but yeah, the snake bite, that's uh, a very good saving. In fact, it's a 65% saving. Um, like I say, the snake bite is listed at 4,000 gold on its own. So for 1,900, you get that. The three days of premium. Uh, two four times crew XP boost stops and two three times XP boost stops. Um, like I say, the snake bite crew with that skill, which reduces shell dispersion by 5%. And um, yeah, an ASOP for it as well. So yeah, very, very nice. But it is only available for 24 hours. So do make sure before you do this, um, you know, this, uh, this war story that you've got that gold in place or. Or you can put the gold on if you are thinking about getting the snake bite. Very fun tank. Uh, very fun tank. Not everybody's uh, cup of tea because it's, it's, you know, it's a bit lightly armoured. And I'm not quite sure what's going on with my voice today. I keep having to pause it and clear my throat. I keep going croaky. Um, but yeah, more lightly armoured. Uh, it's had armour basically removed from the Cromwell. It's supposed to represent like a, a training model. And... Uh, the gun isn't particularly good. It's uh, it's not the stock gun from it, but it, it's sort of the mid gun, so it's quite low penny. You do find yourself having to, to sling a lot of premium ammo in it, uh, especially in tier 8 matches. Even some, if you get around the side and rear, you may struggle. Um, you know, from from experience, the, the standard ammunition on it sometimes struggles to get through the side of a tiger. And, uh, you know, that's just from my own experience. Not always, but it does, obviously, because, you know, it's, it's pen is 91, and that's not the uh, the armour on the side of a tiger, which I think is about 70, is it, or 80? 80, I think it is. However, obviously, 
you know, 91 is the average penetration. It can go, um, I think it's something like 20% either way, or that might be for damage. But anyway, obviously penetration has a, a range, doesn't it? And 91 is the sort of average. So, occasionally I have bounced off the side of a tiger, and that's, you know, close as well. Um, but, you know, if you place your shots most of the time, it can go through. So it's it's one of those that you really have to pick your ammunition sort of carefully. A lot of people just, you know, use premium ammo in it, and it can afford it. You know, it, with, the, uh, with the silver bonus, you can do that. However, you know, some people, like, I mean, me, I've got half and half. So I've got 32 AP rounds and 32 APCR rounds on it. And basically just sort of swap and choose depending on the situation and what I need to be, uh, you know, be penning. But back to this one. Well, what you've got to do on here, you've basically got to go and take the airfield. But uh, you've also got to sort of optional objectives, which are the, uh, the ammo dump and... Oh, sort of the ammo depot, what was the other one? The repair depot, it might have been. So I just cut along one side, took one, uh, coming back the other way. And coming back to this one, there's a few tanks down here, a few enemy tanks. And I did end up having to pick up uh, a health repair, actually, because I don't know if they were firing HE quite, or, or what they were using. I was trying to determine, there we go. And my commander's been knocked out. It's the Panzer 3-4. I don't think he is using a howitzer. But anyway, my commander got knocked out. Next shot, gunner gets knocked out. Great. And uh, I think my radio operator gets knocked out just after this. So I've got to basically finish the rest of this mission with a dead gunner, which is not much fun. And it was just one of those, you know, it was the first hit, commander done. So I healed him. Next hit, bang, gunner dead. It's like, great. So yeah, a bit frustrating, um, but yeah, I do like this modified version of Thiepel Ridge. I know, like I say, it is, it is uh, sort of quite open, so I don't know quite how it would work. See, I take another hit there, and I'm quite well angled using the gun depression, so I, I don't know. Not quite sure what gun they're using, but it, it doesn't really matter anyway. Um, but yeah, like I say, I don't know how it would work, because it, it sort of... It would be very open to snipers, although there are lots of little places to sneak through. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see, you know, even just for a test period. Uh, that'd be sort of quite nice, but it, it, it did take me a little bit to, to recognise which one this is, or, you know, which map it is. But now I've just got to try and take this guy down, waiting for the horrific aim because of the dead gunner. And I think, if I remember rightly, I do just start marking people instead. Well, that might be when I actually go to take the airfield. And that's everybody dead up here, so grab this. That will give me, uh, I think it gives you an ammo refill. Which you can pick up, it's normally on the challenge mode that you can't pick up any, uh, any sort of refills and what have you. And my ammo count is getting a little bit low. And with my aim being what it is at the moment, yeah, I could probably do with picking up that ammo thing, so that's in fact what I do. Just wait for it to cap. Here come my allies trundling along. The German ammo depots were captured. And there we go, grab that ammo and then go and grab oh well, go and capture the airfield. Or kill everything. Whichever uh, whichever comes first really. But yeah, I I do enjoy these war stories. they they are a nice distraction. Uh, I don't go on them sort of over and over again, but every now and again I'll sort of jump into one just to have a, a bit of something different. But London would continue um, to be bombed into submission whilst the Germans held the airfield. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it would like to say. You know, I don't seem down on this one. I did really enjoy it. I enjoyed, you know, tearing about in the Cromwell. It's always good fun. And uh, I did, I found it quite interesting, and I really do like what they've done with these maps. They have really made them different. I mean, the fact, like I say, that uh, I just couldn't recognise this one at first just shows how much, you know, sort of how different it can be. Either that or I'm just an idiot and everyone's like, no, I recognise that straight away. That could just be that. But I'm not going to get too far in. I don't want to get surrounded. Because Cromwells don't have the best of armour. They're sort of more, yeah, sort of more nimble, getting out of the way kind of thing. The turret's not too bad. Again, you really do need to be using the gun depression though, because the front of it is very, very flat. 
so it's you know it's quite easy for for the enemy to just pen it. But I am finding it incredibly frustrating with the dead gunner. I didn't. In fact, yeah, I was I was quite irritated with the fact that they did kill my gunner just after I'd healed my commander as well. And in fact, if both had died at the same time or I'd not healed the commander and then the gunner got knocked out, I'd have healed my gunner and thought I'd sod it for the commander. I've got a scout with me. He can spot. I'd rather have a live gunner. It's now just a case of trying to, to finish these guys off. But the, uh, the allies that are with me seem to be making themselves useful, so that's quite nice. They seem to be doing quite well with taking out the uh, the enemy tanks. And I think it might even be this guy left, and that's it. If I remember rightly. And yep, there you go. So I'm going to go quietly, watch the next cutscene, and I'll be back afterwards. The Germans had been pushed back to the landing beaches. Hitler's forces were now fighting a bitter defensive retreat. Sanctuary lay but a short distance from shore where the Kriegsmarine were waiting. The British were in the ascendancy, but could not risk letting their quarry escape to regroup another day. For Lieutenant Edwards, this would be his greatest hour, the moment that he chased the Germans into the sea. Steel and blood. Edwards knew deep down that this would be a fight with no quarter asked and none given. They still had to overcome their biggest challenge yet. Bile of the 6th Panzer Division, one of Hitler's greatest commanders, was all that stood between success and failure. If Britain was to prevail, Edwards would have to defeat this commander. This was it. The day of reckoning had arrived. Edwards would pay the Germans back for the humiliation and suffering the British had endured at Dunkirk. Word spread that the Germans were hurriedly trying to evacuate their troops off the shore. Edwards sped onwards towards the enemy. So here we are for the last part, and it's uh, a modified... Well, I never know how to pronounce this. I want to say Ken, or maybe Ken, Ken, but anyway. C A E N, I think is how it's spelt, but uh, this is a sort of heavy modi uh, heavily modified version of that again. And uh, this one didn't take me quite as long to recognise it because of obviously the big ridge running down the middle, which is not so much now the middle. Or it, well, it did look like a big ridge, uh, but then I realised that actually no, that's lighter, so that might be down towards the beach. But I do like what they've done with it. But again, I don't think this would work particularly well in the uh, multiplayer. Although, I don't know, it's still got quite a few hiding places. It is sort of open, which that map is, I suppose. Most of it is quite open, and you've just got the rocks and uh, the knolls and hillocks and all the rest of it to hide behind and, and sort of use as cover. So, yeah, it, it might work. But anyway, I didn't even realise that I, though, I think those two tanks that we took down were actually the, the secondary... I think they were the secondary mission, I'm not entirely sure, and I wasn't sure where to go, I was going to go all the way up the map, seeing if there was, you know, anything to kill up there, because it doesn't really mark anything apart from that first waypoint. So yeah, I wasn't really sure where to go at first, and that's why I decided to come up into the middle a bit more, and just see what I can see. And again, you know, it is quite heavily modified, but again, it just looks, you know, I think they've done a good job with this. And uh, obviously this is the uh, the beachhead that we're driving them back on, sort of, uh, well, an alternate version. Well, it's just after uh, the events at Dunkirk, and this is almost sort of a, a mirror image of them, but with the Germans on the retreat and us on the attack instead. And now I need to get down here. Am I going to do it the safe way? Of course not. Let's risk it a little bit. Now, going back to the uh, the snake bites again, I think that that's actually based off of um, well an incident out straight out of history. Uh, I can't remember his name, 
uh, I will try and find it and mention it in a, in a video in the next couple of days. But I did read the story and it was about a, a Cromwell tank crew during the Second World War and I think they've been fighting across Normandy after D-Day. I think it was. Yeah, after D-Day, yeah. Uh, fighting their way sort of through France and Belgium and what have you. And um, there was basically a point where they were, they were moving down, I don't know if it was railway embankments possibly. But there was sort of a, a big hill and there was a gap through it. And they were told to be, you know, go through and, and check it out. And as they went through, something opened fire on, uh, opened fire on them. Very, very rapid fire. Uh, you know, sort of boom, 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 boom. And it was, uh, I think it was a an anti-aircraft gun of some kind. And, you know, they went full in reverse, straight back out of this, uh, this gap. It was almost like an alleyway between these uh, embankments. And as they pulled back and got out to have a look, they'd actually got these shells. And they were, like I say, not tank shells but they were you know big things maybe uh, I can't remember what size but you know I want to say sort of 20 millimeter type things and uh, you know there are a few dints and scrapes on the front and one of them was actually stuck right into the front of the tank uh, near the the driver's viewport on that flat plate on the front and you know just stuck in and that was sort of you know unheard of they were like well, you know, what's going on that shouldn't have really done that much damage and, uh, you know, they got a few people to look into. We've got the quartermaster to come or whatever. Um, is it quartermaster? I think it is. But anyway, we got the relevant people to come and have a look. I'm really <laughs> destroying this story. And uh, as it turns out, basically, what had happened was they'd been given uh, a training Cromwell, which had thinner physical thickness of frontal armor, but it also it wasn't armored steel, um, so it was softer. And that's why their Cromwell was so much faster. They had noticed this, that it was much quicker and more agile than the others. Um, but it had done them well throughout, you know, throughout their sort of campaign from D-Day. And they were told initially to basically go and requisition themselves a, a you know, a proper Cromwell and turn this one back in and get a proper one. And they refused. They said, nope, it served us well. We've been lucky in it. You know, we're, we've got all this way and none of us have been hurt and what have you. So we're going to stick with this one. Thank you very much. And they did, and they kept their training Cromwell. And uh, as far as I'm aware, I think they, you know, they kept it to, to the end of the war and sort of got through it. I think. Uh, but again, I'll I'll try and find the story out and put a sort of reference. Um, I read it in a tank book, but I think you can find it online as well. And I've probably paraphrased it a little bit, but <laughs> you generally get the gist. So yeah, that was you know that actually happened in real life. Edward stared at the lone German tank blocking his path. He was about to go now I've sort of rambled through most of that, but to be honest, it wasn't particularly interesting. It was sort of me sat on a bluff, shooting a load of tanks at a distance, and uh, that's what that bit was. Once you've spotted them, you can just sit, and you and your allies can pick them off. And then right at the end, this guy turns up. Um, Bale, I think his name is, or Bile, uh, who's supposed to be a you know tough German commander, and he turns up in his Tiger too, and you're in your little tier 6 Cromwell, but never mind Cromwells are fast and agile Cromwells can circle Tiger 2's and rip them apart and while I'm doing that and he's trying to follow me with his gun, the rest of my uh, entourage are also putting a few nice shots in and I'm just making sure that I only fire when I've got the side or I've got the rear of his tank because this will not pen the front particularly easily and that's it, him done I'll leave you to enjoy the uh, the last cut scene and I'll be back tomorrow with another video so until then, take care of that and I'll catch you next time see you later the British victory had been absolute Hitler's war machine had been disassembled and scattered across the sands of this unassuming corner of England Edwards and his crew watched as the long line of German prisoners were slowly escorted away from their defeat.
Lieutenant Edwards was right. Preparations were already underway for a joint British and American force to invade northern France. Edwards and his Cromwells would soon be called upon once more to fight for a free Europe. 